All right, y'all, before we go kick Cobra's tail, let's have ourselves a play day. Yeah! Oh, play day. Okay, before we get started, uh, well, first, yeah, I guess we're catching some rain uh, all the way up here in Arkansas. But second, I need to go back and apologize to Slacker Hacker. For the last play day, I think it was, King Arthur Customs sent me this Foosh Blue Hulk. Fwolk. Amazing job, painted blue, has kind of the foosh skull down here on the pants. That's what threw me and made me think that he was the one that sent me that big old box of blue troopers holding flags and blue droids and all kinds of foosh goodness. But that was Slacker Hacker. So I, I apologize, Slacker. In my brain, I knew it was you, but I got excited and... I, I, Y'all are sending some quality work in, and I, it's easy for this old man to get confused these days. And third, not as much stuff as a usual play day. And I'm not saying, oh, send me stuff. What I'm saying is I haven't had a chance to sit down and do as much painting as I wanted to. Because there is some insane print stuff that I have in baggies in there that I've got to get to, and I want to show off. But that's what future play days are for. Right now, we're gonna do these, and then we'll come back around to other things later. To start things off, a lot of you have probably seen this. In fact, I made a whole video about this, but I figured I'm playing today, and it's a day. This is the Bandai Mandalorian model kit. Well, part of it. The Mandalorian kit was actually a modified version of the Boba Fett model kit. And instead of just leaving empty space and all that, they left a lot of the Boba Fett parts in different colors on the new sprues. So I thought, what happens if I mix and match? The undersuit is brown because Mandalorian's suit is brown underneath. And then some of the armor parts come out silver or well, gray, I guess. But then I happen to have an extra Boba Fett kit for the chest, the shirt, the shoulder pads, the crotch piece, the knee pads, and to complete the helmet that's green on the back there and red on the front. I don't know, I just wanted to throw something together, see what happens, and I, I thought maybe it would look like an alternate Mandalorian or some background character, but it's unmistakably Boba Fett. The design is just there, but then a lot of people pointed out that it kind of matches the color scheme of the cutscene from Clone Wars where he fought Cad Bane, and that's how he got the dent in the helmet when Cad Bane shot him or whatever. Yeah, I guess it works. I may go back and put the belt pouches on too because my thought was leave them off. I can get full leg movement, but he looks a little bit little in the middle. Just a neat little one-off thing. Something for the, the Boba Fett shelf. Okay, I know that the Marvel Legends tombstone was nice and classic-y, but for me... Tombstone was always in a suit. So when I saw people using the Diamond Select Pulp Fiction Marcellus Wallace and modifying it, I thought, hey, I can do that. But they were putting a tie-in and a regular shirt underneath. I am not that skilled. So I just put a black paint job on the suit, did some silver here and there, primered it. You can still see the orange color through a little bit, but I figured, well, one, I'm lazy. I got to this point and I thought, oh, God, do I really want to put white up in there? But two, it gives it just a slight bit of color on a color palette that would be grays and whites and blacks. That's it. And yeah, it's still rough. I hit the collar with the black paint while I was trying to do this and I didn't get the black all the way under the suit jacket. But all in all, I, I don't know. I kind of like this. This was kind of one of those throwaway customs. You know, one you work on and your heart's not completely into it, but then you get almost finished and you think, oh, yeah, might as well, huh? Oh, that button's rough right there. Right? Buttons are all probably rough. I did that right before I walked in here. I had a gray that I used, and it's still rough around the hands too, but I had a gray that didn't quite match the skin tone they had on Tombstone, they as in Hasbro. So I came in and kind of put that gray on here to make it match up because I suck at matching colors. This kitty though, I was wanting to pour my whole heart and soul into it and I'm kind of proud of it. Don't get me wrong, there's some roughness still, especially around the eyes, but man, I'm getting old, I'm getting shaky. I, I, I'm doing the best I can here. But like I said, I'm, I'm kind of proud of this with the lines and everything. This was sculpted and printed by Fanplastic4 on Instagram, and he did it in a way, well, okay, first, this is just a statue. There's no movement here, but he sculpted in articulation points that kind of match Marvel Legends. That way, if I have this on the shelf, looking like she's phasing up through the shelf itself, it still matches the aesthetic of the rest of my figures. Just a brilliant little piece in a costume that, well, at first I thought, 
mm, Hasbro's probably not going to give us this version. But then I realize if they give us new mutants, this is just an easy head swap, really. But for now, this will work. And then here's a little tease of an alternate version he did for me. Same pose, different phasing effect. And I haven't got to the body on that one, but look at the little details. I already broke this once. I dropped it on hardwood and I broke the wing off. And then Lockheed is the one that actually mounts to the wall. The arm is attached to Lockheed by two little itty bitty legs. Got it glued back together and I wanted to paint it while I was messing with it. And then future play day, we'll show off the rest of her. And yeah, Todd stands, they're all over the place. I will probably come up with something smaller and well, less poster tacky. Coming back around to something I actually missed last play day, TGC Customs on Etsy and then TGC underscore underscore customs on Instagram. Somehow this box got stuck in a different pile. I missed it. We're gonna come back around and look at his 3D printed like gears for GI Joe, backpacks, weapons. Let's see what all he has in here. Tactical shotgun, that is a flint upgrade. Ooh, that looks nice. The other grip hand that comes with GI Joe yeah, this grip coming down will work great. Cobra Officers AK-47. Oh, now I need more Cobra Officers. There is Flint Shotgun, a different than the tactical one, but still, oh yeah, that, uh, that's different, but still matches the overall design. Ripper's Rifle, oh no, do I need some Dreadnoughts? Come on Hasbro, hit us with some Dreadnoughts. I, I have some weapons to go with them. Look at that, that's nifty. Cobra M3A-1 from the cartoon. Oh yeah, that is recognizable. Buzzer's Chainsaw, dang it! We got Zartan, you think we're gonna get more Dreadnoughts? Hopefully sooner rather than later. Oh, that is badass. Whoa. Monkey wrenches, harpoon gun. Look at the weird, the wacky, the wild. It, it's just an awesome design and it translated into 3D form perfectly. Oh, he sells snake eyes Uzis because <laughs> snake eyes. Well, we have a couple of snake eyes that don't have an Uzi, right? Uh, yep. That's snake eyes approved. Fireflies backpack and it opens up. Oh, look at that. Oh, oh, so many tools down in there. Is that just a snug thing that goes back to... Oh, yeah. That's not falling off. Buzzer gets a chainsaw and Buzzer gets a backpack. Oh, and the fuel jug even comes out. I'm going to have to make a Buzzer. You know, start gathering parts now. And then there's Spirit's arrow gun and backpack. <laughs> I'd forgotten what an arrow gun was, but hey, it's a gun and there's arrows. We need a spirit too, don't we? Oh, all kinds of extra arrows up in there. Look at the little details on the buckles and then a couple of grenades on the side. That looks fantastic. There is Flint with his shotgun. That looks good. And then Snake Eyes with his Uzi. Coming back around to Foosh Hulks. This is from Luke Figure Me Out. And he says that uh, I actually started this custom before you got the other blue Robo Hulk. You guys think of me as such an angry guy. No, 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 I get it. Look, it's Roboverse. And down here on bottom is small parts. Do not put them in your mouth. I get to do an unboxing on play day. That's kind of cool. Uh oh. Oh, there's hats for Hulk and some. I, I don't know what this is. Oh, you know what this is? This is my background. You put it up on a, a scale table going up a scale wall to do scale reviews. I'm just realizing what Hulk you use. This is the Gamerverse Hulk that was originally gray and you painted all the skin green, didn't you? That and this is appropriate because it captures my actual muscle mass. Sculpted some beer, the gray streak in the middle. <laughs> you guys nail that. I guess that's my trademark now. <laughs> it's got a magnet in it. It sticks to the head. Is it on both of them? It is. And I really, really dig that it seems just slightly small for me hulking out. I grow, but my hat doesn't. It's not made of unstable molecules. It's just a regular old hat. Wearing a foo shirt, ready to do some weekly, some reviews, but the, the camera. Oh, here's, this is me when I forget to hit record on the camera. Welcome back to another Foosh Weekly. Or maybe the hat's kind of small because you guys sending me customs of myself. Get, Kind of giving me the big head. Is that, what, is that what you're saying? Oh, but I love it. I love it. Look at this perfect melding of best turtle and best bad guy trooper 
in the Star Wars universe. This is Imperial Sewer Trooper DT1983 from Yoda Fett on Instagram. I, 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 I opened this box and it was just kind of, oh, where have you been all my life? It's a Black Series Stormtrooper, green armor, purple undersuit, brilliant design to the headband. See more undersuit down here at the knees and then the well the brownish turtle shell color for the chest and the crotch he even added a backpack same colors has a nice little cloth flap up on top on a velcro strip and i thought he glued it on so when i turned it i thought i broke it but it's actually a magnet but that's not all what would a donny trooper be without an electro staff it has the wrap in the middle and i think this is actual metal but then on the ends has kind of an electric effect, you know, to make it a little bit more Star Wars-y. Oh, <laughs> now I feel I need to, you know, add three more to the squad. Well, I didn't even notice even the holsters painted purple. Teenage Imperial Ninja Troopers. Next up here is the Non-F Productions Cobra Throne. And there is just some magic going on here. Look how smooth the finish is. I, well, it has a texture to it, but for this being a print of some kind, I, this is just excellent quality. It's not overdone. You see the surface coming around in here, but there are some scales stuck in places. There on the side. Oops, we'll get to that. <laughs> That's not wrong. There's scales on the other side have the cobra itself coming up in a seat back. Beautiful detail to the cobra head. The fangs were separate pieces. I plugged them in. Didn't have to use glue, nothing. They're just in there. Then there's scales on the back and an open spot. That has a hatch of some kind. And he sent along magnets to glue in here that you can just snap right there. But I'm gonna have to get more because there's four places for it here but you have to have the opposite side and then it's the same thing for this back piece on top of that i need to do some cleaning on this but this is an actual rubbery seat cushion for the bottom and at first i was like they're toys they don't need to be comfortable but then i realized that this material you're putting a toy on top of painted resin and it may cause scratches or may rub off on the figure this way you're not doing any damage to either or. But pulling the cushion, you notice that it's hollow going through. And if you want to seat Cobra Commander on it, he has the sword scabbard. He has this little cape thing hanging down further than his ass in the seat. And even if you take that stuff off, he still has the coattails. For that, Non-F included a piece that has a cutout in the back. You put that there and all of that feeds right down into the back of the throne. And when he's sitting, you can't see it. I mean, if you go looking really, really hard, oh no, there's a hole in there, but you're also posing action figures. <laughs> there's some things that this scale can't do that we can do in real life. Either way, very well thought out. I also like the size of this. It's not too large. You can put it on the shelf and it's not gonna bump up the one thing. It doesn't spread out and have figures standing way away from Cobra Commander. It's, it's a smaller footprint than I've seen with other thrones. Or, well, diorama pieces in general. Yes! You guys have watched Play Days enough to know that I love Casting Cave. Corey does some excellent, excellent work. This is his Mandalorian helmet that is scaled down from Hot Toys. I've shown this several times on the Black Series Beskar armor, but I also wanted to replace the one on my first episode of the first season Mandalorian. It's just better details, better shape than the Black Series. It's not quite as big, but I feel that's appropriate. And yeah, there's the whole Mandalorian, big helmet, small helmet, figure, 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 company, company, company. But once I find that sweet spot, I like to stick with it. Plus I have a soft spot for this look. It's just so kind of thrown together. But I also grabbed this replacement head for the Black Series Clone Wars Anakin Skywalker. This is the head that came on it. And as always, Hasbro kind of mixed a Clone Wars aesthetic with realism to make it fit into the overall Black Series display, which I am good with, but I kind of wanted more of a dynamic look. I think this is a Kota Bakaya statue scaled down and repainted. It looks kind of closer to the series and skews a little further away from the realistic look, but once you zoom out and put them in the display, I think this may be my favorite costume for Anakin. So to put this head on it and kind of get a better overall look, plus it does something for the overall proportions. It makes them feel 
lankier, taller, more Darth Vader-esque. And then finally, from Left Hook Customs, there is Robo Backwoods Killa. What I say to you guys about the big head? It's essentially me as a G.I. Joe character. There's my beard and my hat and appropriate musculature and foosh blue gear. Two unboxings in one play day. Crazy. Uh oh, what? There's a big ass gun. It's Fortnite, isn't it? The McFarlane, one of the big characters. And look at that. <laughs> Damn near match the blue. Not quite as blendy as this, but it's still fushy blue. Looks like everything on the head is glued down or sculpted too, which is fine. Look how low that hat is sitting. And then the sunglasses help with the lightness a bit, but it's the beard. Damn you guys with your brown beard, gray streak in the middle. So inaccurate to my young looking looks. Blue on the back side. And yeah, <laughs> I've got me on the Star Wars shelf. I have me on the Marvel shelf. I can now have me on the G.I. Joe shelf. Look at those abs, like I'm looking in a mirror. Comes with this big ass weapon. Backwoods can uh, lay down the law when he needs to, but most of the time he's just annoying the enemy by talking from across the battlefield, just incessantly talking about the same thing over and over and over. At the end of the day, play days are the best days. What can I say other than I appreciate you guys sending stuff in for me to look at, to play with, to, oh my God, uh, unique things for the shelf. I also appreciate all you guys out there who put your work online. You blood, sweat, and tears, put it up for sale, and I'm there. It's, okay, I do need a throne. I do need new head sculpts for my Star Wars figures. Ah, gimme. So if you have any interest here or something caught your eye, the links are all in the description. Go show those guys some love, buy some stuff, leave a like, whatever platform they're on. Just say, hey, you're doing fine work. But if you enjoyed this play day, comment, like, subscribe. Much, much love to the plus if you're interested in seeing videos early or in a position to help out the channel, patreon.com. But wherever you're watching this, I'll always catch you on the foosh. Oh, and the rain's giving me away, huh? I usually shoot all the play parts first and then well, because some stuff I don't know what I'm getting, some stuff I have to open up, and then I shoot the intro and the outro after that. So the rain started as I was finishing all the playing. Foosh editing secrets. Ooh.